alerted to an automatic voice messaging system. Five yes. one is not available. At the tone, please record your message. To leave a callback number, press five. Mm. <laughs> I'm just kidding, man. Where are you at? <laughs> Matt, where are you? It's podcast time. Let's go. Let's go, man. Oh, I couldn't do that with a straight face. Where are you? Where did it go? Where are you at? Where are you at? Where did it go? Seriously, where are you? Get on Skype now. I'll see you later. <laughs> I can't believe you did that. Sweet, merciful Neptune, my kids, a guy freaking pee here? <laughs> I was in the bathroom and prepping things up. I was on the computer getting ready, yet you keep calling me and all that stuff. Yes, I am. Yes, I'm ready. Yes, I am ready, Mike. <laughs> I was just getting on the computer and wait for Skype to boot up. That's quite the pee. <laughs> Ten minute pee. <laughs> Ten minute pee. I was also. Hey, I was prepping up with other stuff. Okay. Uh huh. There can be only one. They're here. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubblegum. Go ahead. Make my day. Cinema Royale. Hello, welcome to Cinema Royale. I'm your host, Mike Mixtape, and welcome to another glorious episode where we stay classy on the podcast, whatever we can. Uh, let's introduce the co-host of the podcast first up is our favorite canadian matt bernales and i was animat hey guys uh i really did a lot of my homework for this episode so i managed to pick up some comics and learn a bit about batman so i just want to say thank you frank miller for creating all-star batman and robin now i know entirely what batman is all about mm-hmm. it's uh... all about the city this beautiful city that i'm in she is like a whore but the city, I adore it so much. Oh, Frank Miller, you and your prose. Shut up, Debbie, you whore. <laughs> we will have sex later after this podcast. Uh, yes, I'll, I'll talk about Frank Miller when I get to my movie. Um, then we got James Sullivan, also known as Jaime Dude. Tonight's broadcast is brought to you by the official McDonald's Two Face mug. Oh my god. Oh wow. Of those. <laughs> you guys remember this? Oh yeah. Uh, actually, yeah. Oh yeah. Yep. It's genuine. Look at it. Oh, ba ba ba. And that's that's when McDonald's was actually bringing out some real le- legitimate stuff. Like, you buy that and you get an actual cool thing. Uh huh. Mm hmm. I got swagger, folks. <laughs> so much swag. Hashtag swag tag dealer. Okay, that came out wrong. Okay. Anyways, tonight, <sighs> tonight is all about Batman, the character, and we're going to talk about some of the films in the big franchise of Batman. He's got a great legacy, you know, he's one of the top tier DC superheroes everybody loves them uh, different eras of Batman cheesy serious and uh, we're just gonna go through a handful of live-action stuff um, some traditional some non-traditional some animated ones especially for a couple of us and uh, yeah so let's start it off with a classic that Matt has previously reviewed in the past uh, mask of the phantasm Mm-hmm. Yes. Now, this is actually a very interesting Batman movie. Often, this is actually the most uh, thought a- uh, sought after Batman movie, and this is mostly because um, this isn't this is not really a standalone Batman movie, but this is more ba- uh, taken from 
the animated uh, Batman series, which is uh, which is still highly praised and often considered uh, one of the best animated series of the 90s. Mm-hmm. And often a wonderful portrayal of Batman. Everybody loves it. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, the, the most interesting thing about Batman Master of Phantasm, I honestly consider it the most underrated Batman movie there is. Um, one of the biggest things is that what this movie does, which I think they kind of, they pretty much decided to let it go in um, most of the Batman movies nowadays, is that they kept the detective side of Batman. They pretty much, like, the, like, they kept the detective of detective comics. And, like, you do check out this mystery about, like, this phantasm figure who's been running around and, like, killing off uh, several mafia people. And what they do, and what what I really do appreciate with uh, this with this movie is that they do also bring in a lot of the characters like we want to see to appear, and they actually use them very very well. Like this does not feel like fan service. This actually feels like it connects to the story because for one, they brought in the Joker, and like the Joker's not there for just a random appearance. Like he's also there as one of the antagonists of the movie. And what's actually really fascinating about it is that, yeah, even though it is animated, it's based on an animated series, they don't push back from it. Oh, God. Like, they they go brutal. There is a death count on this. Um, And it really is just – it's just fascinating, and it's really action-packed the whole way through. It's really fascinating to watch. And plus the fact that you learn a lot about that, like you learn about Bruce Wayne himself, like you learn more and often like you could see some really dramatic moments, um, even some parts that you don't see in, again, in recent live action Batman films. There are several times, to- like it happens several times that Batman would go and visit his parents in the graveyard. It's mm-hmm. really fascinating. The only criticism I would have is that, well, the animation looks cheap, but then again, that's TV animation for you. It's mo- the, they mostly got to work with the TV animation that they have with uh, the, the animated Batman series of Batman. But even at that, for TV animation, it's not too bad. Like, of course, you got the signature Paul Dini design, which is still really good. Um, the but yeah, basically, like I said, the only issue is that like if, if only the animation could be like feature length quality if. The animation is more smooth. It like it has a real flow to it instead of being fully static, and like there's more use of co- okay, maybe not more use of color, but like more use of shadow, like a more proper use of shadows and lighting and all that stuff. Like it really would be fascinating. But other than that, this is definitely fa- uh, a fantastic film, and like it, it really makes me wonder, like why is it that nobody really talks about this Batman movie? It feels like. This is honestly one of the best Batman films. This is like right up there with um, movies like oh, Fudge Nabbit, like uh, The Dark Knight and the 1989 Batman movie. Like even like the one thing I'm surprised about is that even in the uh, Lego Batman movie teaser trailer, you would often see them like they would mention like all the years that uh, Batman was previously in a movie and they would always skip over Batman Mask of the Phantasm. And I and I don't understand why. Because it is a movie that it is that is released in theaters. So like why not why not acknowledge it? And plus the fact that it like is it is it because it's animated that people are are not gonna care about it? People like don't like they just think otherwise? I, I don't know. Well they're they're hoping for people to go see uh the Lego Batman movie, so the fact that it's animated I don't. I don't think that's the issue. Well, no, no, um, no. It's not. It's not the like Lego Batman movie is not the issue. It's the fact that Warner Brothers is mostly ignoring Mask of the Phantasm. It, yeah. I, and go on, Mike. The Warner Brothers is keeping their animated, you know, directed DVD kind of uh, animated films in their own universe kind of thing, and I was reading up, actually, uh, Warner Brothers decided to make Max of the Phantasm a theatrical release instead of a intended directed video feature. So, the... They left the show creators with less than a year of production time to scramble to convert the aspect ratio to widescreen, so it, it was originally intended for a directed video release before changing over to theatrical. 
Mm-hmm. So, um, but I just think Warner Brothers is not acknowledging the animated features featuring the DC characters at all. They just focus on the live action ones most likely, and that's yeah. what, what people are most recognizing when they think of Batman. You know, it's like for the makers of blah blah blah, and Lego Batman's just this new feature that features Batman. Yeah, so. I guess, and also there's also the fact that Warner Brothers. Is real like ever since the Lego Movie, they really are getting more serious with their animation division, like creating Warner Animation Group, mm -hmm. and like right now, like so far, what they got in their lineup is just Lego movies, like just a pile of Lego movies, and then there are a few occasional variety, like actual animated features, like uh, like they're gonna release Storks uh, later on in 2016, and also. They got another one called Smallfoot, so we'll we'll wait and see how people will take seriously Warner Animation Group. Yeah, maybe. Um, oh, yeah, there's also that Hanna Barbera Cinematic Universe. Oh, yeah, there's that too. Oh yeah. <laughs> yep, starting off with. Right. Oh <laughs> um, uh, yes, yeah, starting off with their previously mentioned Scooby Doo Universe. Uh, Scoob. Scoob. Looks like they're going to reboot the Flintstones next. They're going to be our ancestors. No. Like, it's going to be unavoidable at this point. Hey, maybe they could do a Laugh Olympics movie. Who knows? Oh, yes, with a gritty reboot. Um, but, um, yeah, Mask of the Phantasm. I, I watched it, and uh, to be honest with you... Um, this, uh, I, I, I found it, uh, I, I don't know what it was, and don't hate on me, folks, in the comment section, uh, but I actually found it, you found, you said you found it overrated, I mean, you, you found it underrated. Yeah, there you go, thank you. I, I, uh, I went into this, um, knowing that, uh, Siskel and Ebert, uh, reviewed this at the end of that year, saying that, oh my goodness, this is this is actually fascinating. I can't believe we didn't uh, we didn't uh, review this during the year. We skipped over it. We missed it. But it's really a great movie. You should check it out now. It's on it's on uh, VHS. Um, I I hear critics all over saying, yes, this is an underrated gem. You should go fish it out, especially if you're a Batman fan. And I've seen entire web show episodes being dedicated, dedicated towards it. And I watched it one time, and I sort of thought, hmm, okay. I found it overrated. And... And I would just like to remind the audience there that we also had a discussion about Batman and Robin and how James says that he finds it to be okay, so leave your comments below about what you think. <laughs> mm -hmm. <sighs> In other words, attack. Attack my minions, attack. <laughs> Knock on wood. <laughs> oh, <God>. uh, I kid, James. <laughs> so, but but yeah. As for, I, and the thing is, I I can't really, I I can't really say why I disliked it. I I just sort of found it to be, hmm, man. I I did watch the the animated series when that was on. Uh, I'd be going over to a friend's house. I'm like, oh, Batman's on. Okay, why not watch it? And that, and I have great respect. I, I'm not a. I have a, a great level of respect for the animated series. I haven't gone out and watched uh, every single episode or anything like that. But this is the one that this is the universe that gave us Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill as mm -hmm. as uh, two polar opposites uh, with. Uh, with very unforgettable voice acting jobs, and arguably, some people would even argue, that, like people would say that's the best, like they're the best portrayal of Batman and the Joker, even. 
Mm-hmm. In mm-hmm. in these in these recent generations. So, um, as for Mask of the Phantasm, yes, they're they're doing a uh, they're they're doing their job as Batman and the Joker, but I felt. I kind of felt like the the Joker was, I I kind of felt like the Joker was inserted at some point in the plot just because hey, we got to have the Joker in there. Uh, I don't remember exactly what clicked in my mind that said that, but I remember watching it at the time. That's just how I felt. And and I respect the. As as far as this film goes, while it, it's it's not particularly uh, it's not particularly memorable for me, hell, I've forgotten what what most of it was about until Matt was just explaining it right there. Um, the thing that I that I give it really uh, major props for is that if it wasn't for Mask of the Phantasm. We wouldn't have we wouldn't have a slew of Batman direct to video movies. Exactly. It was the first in the DC animated universe. So uh, mm-hmm. um, actually I wanted to bring this up actually because I know James has seen this movie recently, but uh, Mask of the Phantasm was actually referenced in a recent Batman animated movie. Um, this year, a movie called Batman Bad Blood, the third mm-hmm. in the uh, Son of Batman trilogy. Uh, in the opening scene, the news broadcast references a criminal by the name of Chucky Soul, one of the gang members in Batman Mask of Phantasm. Oh, uh, it's so forgettable. I I missed that. Sorry. <laughs> so it's not. It's not truly forgotten, you know, it's not underrated, so they acknowledge that it's in canon with the Batman universe, you know, so. To a certain degree. Yeah. Uh, yeah, The, uh, the son of Batman, uh, the, the son of Batman, uh, series, I think they're, I think that's its own universe, you know, you got a differently designed Batman, uh, and uh, and Batwoman is uh, some somebody is is not Barbara Gordon. Oh, it's okay. uh, somebody by the name of Catherine Kane who uh, oh, okay. who doesn't mind killing. Let's say. Okay, I just I just wanted to mention that because I was looking at the, the the connections page on IMDb. So. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. I I did not watch this. I did not research this film. So I uh, I was focusing on my own research for this episode so i i know the batman anime series is highly critical and uh acclaimed i have you know and uh the spin-offs you know with the movies like mask of the phantasm sub-zero i mean those are from what i hear good movies i might check them out i probably will because i have kind of enjoy the batman anime film so far sub-zero i i liked I, I I liked it because it was uh, uh, it it gave Mister Freeze a, a much more proper treatment and it and it turned him into what he's supposed to be, which is actually a sympathetic character, like a more tragic character in the same veins of Phantom of the Opera. Yeah, uh, you you sort of um, you sort of get the the idea that he's not a bad guy just for being the sake of a bad guy. He's a bad guy because he's, he's desperate to do anything for his wife. And, uh, you know, he, he's not, he's not like the Joker where he's just sort of like, okay, I'm going to cause mayhem because I can. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I'll, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll give, uh, I'd, I'd say uh, Sub Zero was a little bit more my thing. That's just me. And they come on the same DVD too. Oh, so yeah, Mask like of the Phantasm and uh, Sub Zero. There's a two disc. There's a two disc set where you can just you know flip it over and. Yeah. 
Huh, there you go. Two for one deal. Hey. Um, mm-hmm. So, I'm moving a little forward with this. Um, Mass of the Phantasm takes elements from a comic that was released uh, like ten years prior called Batman Year One. I, uh, because there's a couple of scenes of Mask of the Phantasm from what I hear from people, especially from Matt. It's like, hey, there was a Mask of the Phantasm too. So it's like, okay, fine. I'll, I'll just read the comic and watch the movie and see how it is. Um, the comic took me a while to read. It's a, it's a four book miniseries written by Frank Miller. Uh, this is a point where Frank Miller wasn't doing crazy. You know, so this is the era where he did Dark Knight Returns and he did Batman Year One. Um, it's actually good writing. Like Be you... before he lost his marbles. Yeah, way before he lost his marbles. Like this is actually good writing. Like I was reading it, it was like really good dialogue, great uh, setups. You know, um, like, it's a four book. It's a four book series containing about twenty four pages each, so it's not a bad read. Uh, so pick up it. I recommend it. The movie. Just however... out of curiosity. Sorry, sorry to interrupt, but like before we before you get into the movie, um, was there like do we know if there's a specific moment or like we know exactly what happened to Frank Miller that caused him to snap and and like go in go ballistic in the comic in the comic industry? Oh, uh, I I I believe that it's uh, it came around that very point where he just sort of thought to himself. At the uh, while well, late at night, one night working on these comics, uh, some time past twelve oh one a.m., he looked up from his from his desk. He looked at the empty coffee cup, and then he looked at himself in the mirror and said, "I'm the goddamn Batman." <laughs> <laughs> That was when he lost his marbles. <laughs> probably. <laughs> I think that's probably what it was. Like, uh, I'm just trying to think of the era. I think. Yeah, probably. I don't know. If you, uh, if you want to take your predictions of what happened, leave in the comments below. Um, but with the the animated directed video, DC films. Uh, they've been doing a slew of uh, adaptations of comics, so give or take. There's some that are trying to deviate, trying to do like a loosely based on a storyline from Batman comics, like uh, the Son of Batman trilogy they're doing. Um, uh, Batman Year One is a direct adaptation of the comic. Like, panel by panel, it's directly the same. The dialogue's the same, no, no deviation, it's just straight up adaptation of it. It's really profoundly amazing this, to know that. It's like, wow. It's like actually seeing the comic come to life. Um, it came out in 2011, five years ago. Uh, mm -hmm. You have a great voice cast. You have Brian Cranston playing Jim Gordon. Um, there's some other ones oh, in there wow. too. Like, But the story of Batman Year One mainly focuses on Batman and Jim Gordon coming into Gotham and, you know, doing their thing. Um, Batman slash Bruce Wayne is voiced by Ben McKenzie, who fans of Gotham may note is playing currently Jim Gordon. Mm. So, it's a little kind of ironic thing. It's like, oh, he voiced Batman in this movie and then he became Jim Gordon in the Gotham series. Um, anyways, the movie in the comic, uh, it shows that Batman has left Gotham for a while. He has come back to Gotham, and, uh, you know, he's, like, still kind of mourning about his parents dying. They do show, you know, the, the iconic, a scene where he looks at his parents' grave, which I love. Oh my god, that scene where he just looks at his parents' graves is perfect symbolic of Batman, just like just frame that sucker, put it on the wall. Um and they do they do briefly show what happened to his parents, which is like 
If you watch anything Batman, they show the origin of how his parents died so many goddamn times. It just it burns into your brain. It's like, all right, they go to the opera. Bam, uh, Bruce gets afraid at one point. He wants to leave. You know, they go out the alley. Oh, Munger comes by. Bang, bang, bang. Oh, I'm dead. Oh, my God, no. In case you forgot how Batman's parents died, here they are again. So, with, with Batman Year One, they, it's beautiful because... They, they, it's like a flashback. They briefly show it. It's in black and white. And it's just like you see them coming out of the opera, going down the alley. The bugger comes by, bang, bang, and you see uh, Bruce's face, you know, being all sad. That's all you need. You don't need to show the whole setup. That's, it's just, I'm sick at the damn origin of the parents dying. It's, it's, it's really repetitive at this point. I mean, even in the recent Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice, they did the fucking thing again. It's like, do we really need to see it so many goddamn times? Ugh. Well, I mean, well, I mean, I mean, at this point, it, it's pretty much the comics' favorite. Like, it, it's the comics' favorite characters to revive just to kill them all over again. You know, you know, it, it's pretty much Batman's parents are the are to DC what Uncle Ben is to Marvel. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's true. Good point. Yeah, I guess all of those make sense. But anyways, so Bruce is like contemplating what to do, you know, with his life, you know, and how he wants to do stuff in Gotham. Meanwhile, you see Jim Gordon's side of it, where he's coming into Gotham. I think he, actually, he was like in in uh, Metropolis at one point, I remember. But he came to Gotham, you know, started a new life. Of course... Yeah, uh, his wife is pregnant, so it's just like, oh, that's not a good place to raise a family, so he's, like, trying to live his life, you know, as a cop, you know, you, you see him at the police station, you know, he gets in with a bunch of the commissioner, and blah, 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 you see that on the side, then you see Batman, uh, Bruce Wayne, you know, becoming Batman, you know, you see the, the inspiration with the, the bat coming in through the window, it's like, the bat comes through the window, it's like, I got it bats with fear struck it into people i'm gonna be a bat he uh and while we were watching the movie last night that was i just sort of noted that and i was like um i was sent in from the bat god instead of a instead of a a dove descending from heaven he sent a bat (laughs) yeah it seems so random like what's the bat doing there it, it, with the bat, it like crashes through the like the window, low, so it's like piercing glass. Like, it's like wow, that bat's strong. Just to bash right through to see. It's like, hey, I'm right here, Bruce. Huh? I'm the inspiration. Look at me. <laughs> it was like, what should I do with my life? The bat comes in. I got an idea. Oh! <laughs> I'm dead now. Take me as a sign. <laughs> it, it, it's actually like a really. I thought that was, like, really cool, actually. It's just like, wow, that's the inspiration. Boom. Um, so you you see him uh, suit up, you know. He's like, like I said, it's like a side-by-side story between Jim Gordon and Batman. So you see Batman do his thing with Jim Gordon and then Batman and Jim Gordon, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you see, and it it's interesting because both the comic and the movie, they go through a, a year. So you see, you know, calendar dates come up. So it's like January, it starts in January, and then it ends in December. So it doesn't go over like a night or over a week or two. It just goes over a whole year, which is nice. It doesn't. It just goes over time, which is a nice transition for some events going on. Um, with the origin of Batman, I thought, you know, you see him go through, you know, trip and tribulations, you know, how to become the superhero, the Batman. And actually, the second time watching, I watched it last night with James. The second time I watched it, um, there's a part in the comic where he's after these thugs who steal a TV on the fire gate or staircase. And in the movie, they don't show the like the monologue in his head. Like in throughout the comic in the movie, you hear the inner monologue of both Jim Gordon and uh, Bruce Wayne slash Batman sometimes, which is great because that's how the comic was, and that's. That's a good way to do it for the movie. But in the comic, for that scene, they, he like he almost drops a guy, and he's like, No! I, I, I won't kill anybody! 
I won't kill anybody. And that's like a pivotal scene in the comics, like, because, you know, he's, he's Batman, you know, he's trying to strike fear into the criminals, you know, scare them off, not to kill them. But in the... Yeah, uh, yeah, tell that to when Batman <laughs> fully started. That's, just, that's how it is in the comic. In the movie, they just skip over that process, you know, they just, like, it, it happens. No inner, inner monologue, no nothing. So that's, like, the only change from the comic to the movie, but otherwise, that's a straight adaptation. Uh... Otherwise, you know, you just see Batman do his thing, you know, try to trip in tribulations. And then towards the end of the movie, you know, Jim Gordon, Batman, Bruce Wayne, you know, they just have this team up now. It's like they know each other, and it kind of teases, like, it's the Joker next. So, um... Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think of... There's, there's one part where there's a pivotal scene with the building and a SWAT team. Because at this point, Batman's doing a lot of... Cr uh, clean up of the city and the policemen are like oh, what the heck is this Batman doing he's he's done 60 uh, these 60 crimes over the past two weeks you know we gotta get the Batman and uh, he gets into his building you know and the SWAT team comes in trying to find him and kill him and he's there's this point where he's like my belt's my belt's pointless now I got a blow blow dart and I got this uh, gadget where it's not been patented yet but it's hope it works i never tried it this far it's like it's a sonar device it's a sonar device that transmits this audio for bats to come so you see the scene where it, the, the audio is going all the way to the caves in the outskirts of gotham and you see the bats come into gotham and it's like this big swarm of bats i was like mm. whoa this this little sonar thing just attracted this big batch of bats just swarming Gotham was like damn that's badass yeah I was, I was watching that like just how many bats are in the city it was like a, it was like over like like ten tens of thousands like there was this like a whole a big swarm um it was pretty cool uh, they do introduce Catwoman in here, too. Selena Kyle's in this, too. So they kind of introduce mm -hmm. her in the process, which it was kind of nice. It was kind of nice to see her, you know, doing her thing and they, how they meet. I don't know. Um, otherwise, I honestly, I think this is, like, the best. Like, the animation. Okay, the animation. Like, I don't normally talk about animated movies, but the animation in this movie, oh, my gosh. It's, it, it's beautiful to look at. It is so glossy and smooth, but it kind of reminds me of... Um, uh, it kind of reminds me of these uh, Scooby-Doo movies where the characters are, they have, like, black, like, little lines for eyes, and it's, like, that kind of animation. It's a very glossy and smooth, and it's, like, oh, it's so good. I'd like to go back and uh, 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 take oh. a look at uh, Catwoman again. Uh, you have to admire all the different origin stories that she has now, especially in especially on film. We have uh, Catwoman. We have Catwoman, the personal assistant. Catwoman, the cat burglar. Catwoman uh, used to work for a used to work for a, a beauty company, and now Catwoman, the hooker. Yes, she's a prostitute in this. Catwoman the whore! <laughs> yeah, she, she's a prostitute, and he works for this pimp, and... And, of course, she lives in an apartment with a bunch of cats, so she's a cat lady, cat person, so that's why Catwoman, she dons that as a persona, and there's... It explains the origin, you know, how she goes into uh, robbing places, you know, become the cat burglar she becomes. And, you know, she gets, like, out, like... She gets like a little jealous, like, "What? I'm doing this, and Batman still gets the recognition on TV? Okay. What the hell is this?" Um, okay, yeah. I, I, by the way, Mike, I just wanted to like try to explain a bit fuller with what you're trying to yeah. to say with the animation. Like, I just saw it, and I think the best way to describe it is that it's like the t it's the TV animation that we got from the Batman animated series, but if it were given more time like a bit more time and a bit more of a budget because like you could see that um the character designs have a bit more detail into them yeah. 
Oh, yeah. uh, the like the animation is a bit like it's a bit more smoother like they added more in betweens mm -hmm. and um like even the backgrounds they're more defined mm -hmm. so that that could probably explain it yeah. so it's it's not it's not feature it's not um it's not animated feature quality but right. it, it, it's like a step higher than tv animation yes it's like in between that yeah it's like the happy medium between the television and the animated feature it's like I was like, wow, what what have I been missing out over these years? It's like, I don't watch a lot of animated movies, but maybe I should just go dive into them and see what it looks like. Like, that was, like, right now, Batman Year One, this film is just, like, one of my favorites right now. Like, it's really darn good. Um, it's good, but it's very slow-paced, I've but noticed. It's, but, it, but it's not a bad thing about it, because it's a slow mm -hmm. build-up. It's not like it's... <sighs> this is so slow and I'm bored. It, it's just, you get inside these characters a lot more with this movie. You get to understand Bruce Wayne a little bit more. He's 25 years old and, you know, he's, you know, trying to get over the grips of his parents' death, you know, trying to, you know, give justice back to Gotham. And then you got Jim Gordon's side of the story where, uh, you know, he's trying to live a new life in Gotham and he's trying to have a, a family life in Gotham. You know, his wife's pregnant and, uh, you know, and he's trying to have struggles with the police force in Gotham, you know. And, uh... <laughs> so, it's just adds a lot of elements. It's, it's kind of simplistic at most, too, because, you know, the origin of Batman is so simplistic. It's like, okay, he has left for a while. He came back. Oh, there's a flashback of when his parents died. Perfect. And then he becomes Batman. Oh, cool. Then you see his first year as Batman. That's pretty cool. Alright, cool. Give him props for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm. uh, well, I noticed I I said it was... Yeah, I did say it was slow. You were falling asleep on it last night. Well, <laughs> it, it was kind of different last night. It was, it was kinda, I was kind of sleeping beforehand, but I did see it previously, and it was just mm -hmm. like, it, it's, it's good. And the second time watching, I noticed a few more details, but yeah, that's a long story short. Yeah, story. before you conked out, you noticed a few more details. Yeah. It was, it was, it was, what am I saying? I conked out after that. Yeah, you did too. But it was a, it's a good film. I'll definitely try to buy it on DVD. You know, have it in my collection because that's damn it's good. In comparison. Mm hmm. Um. But yeah, like the voice cast is like very stellar. You know, and like I guess, but like I was actually surprised. Like Brian Cranston actually is a good Jim Gordon, like, he, it fits the character for me, and then, it's funny, because, uh, during production of Batman Year One, Brian Cranston thought this would be, like, uh, you know, the goofy take on Batman, and before he read the script, so when he read the script, it's like, alright, alright, I'm on board for this. Mm-hmm. And they, he didn't realize, up until that point, that they had, uh, they had brought him on board for his Breaking Bad performance, not his performance in Mal Malcolm in the Middle. Yeah. More or less. <laughs> well, it's just, yeah. He's a... But yeah, if you want to see a the origin of Batman in animation form through good characters, great voice acting, great animation, just trust me, please check out Batman Year One. And... If you want to watch, read the comic, it's just the same. It's just read the comic too. Mm-hmm. And actually, yeah. because of Batman Year One, I'm actually reading more comics now. Oh. So it's a. Uh, uh, so it's a. Uh, a gateway drug, you would say. Yep. Exactly. Um, but moving. Uh. Something a little different here, and it's kind of interesting. I want to hear more about it, but there was a documentary that came out last year, and it was called Bat Kid Begins. Mm-hmm. Ah, yes. Yeah, this, this was something that I picked to watch on Netflix. Uh, for those of you who don't, uh, who aren't familiar with it, uh, three years ago now, three years ago, mm -hmm. when 
in November 2013, there was an event staged over in San Francisco, right across the pond from, from where I live. And you can bet that I heard all about it. You can bet that I was following it. Uh, what happened was uh, pretty much the entire city uh, uh, executed a Make-A-Wish Foundation wish for a young man uh, by the name of... Uh, well, I, well, I had it up here. I had it up here. Let's see, Wikipedia... That kid. Um, Miles Scott, a young man who was a young uh, man who was about five six at the time, uh, was flown in from Oregon by his family under the impression uh, that he was there uh, on a family vacation. What he didn't know was that his parents had granted a wish that he always wanted. And a little bit of backstory behind Miles Scott, he's, uh, he's a cancer survivor. He had leukemia. And so when they, they wrote in and just by chance uh, picked a, a wish to grant for this kid, um... The, the kid said uh, he wanted to be Batman. If, if there could be anybody that he wanted to be, he'd be Batman. And that's because uh, his that's because he actually he actually watched the Adam West series. Now he's a big fan of that because let's face it, that's what I was watching that series when I was around that age. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what it's geared towards. Yep. And um, so he's what he's he's got this uh, uh, he's got this idea. I want to be Batman, and so the in, the uh, the amount of people that they got uh, that they got uh, in on this it's it's amazing. They the. The plan was they had a guy playing Batman coming uh, coming into their coming into their hotel, coming into the family's hotel, handing the kid a suit and saying, "Suit up, we're going on a we're going to so stop some crimes." And uh, for the rest of the day, Miles Gordon, uh, Miles My Scott was was Batman's sidekick. Bad kid. And uh, I just remember... I just remember being blown away when this event happened. And uh, and being amazed. I didn't watch... I didn't watch everything as it was going on. I watched the... I watched the aftermath. You know, I watched how this, this all was being received after the fact. And... Um... I, I said to myself at the time, I said, they're going to make a movie out of this. This would make a great movie. And what do you know, last year's documentary was made. But the thing about it is, it's... Uh, it, it's, uh, it, it's not just a terrific documentary. I learned all kinds of things uh, about what was going on. Uh, about what went on behind the scenes, as well as uh, as well as during the actual deal, you know, play by play, what's going on, and uh, I'm kind of amazed. The guy that they bought, the guy that they hired to be Batman here, couldn't couldn't have been more perfect because he was a stunt he was a stunt man and stunt coordinator coordinator on one hand and on the other hand he was a technician so you couldn't have picked a more perfect bat batman right there he he knows the stunts he's got the gadgets and he actually uh he actually 
Um, he he made the suit. They talk about him making the suit. One of the things that they wanted to do was they got the police commissioner involved over in San Francisco, and the idea was uh, to show uh, to show Miles Scott videos during the day of the police commissioner uh, saying, "Bad kid, we need your help." Uh, the the Riddler's got this going on by the bank or something like that. And uh, uh, the guy playing Batman took the took the phone idea. He said, you know what? Uh, we can show him these videos, but Batman's not going to use a phone. Batman's not going to use a cell phone. No, everybody uses a cell phone. What I'm going to do is strap a projector to my wrist and hold oh. it up like this against the wall. Because <laughs> that's something Batman would do. Oh, wow. And so they actually show him in the documentary him doing this. Uh, and uh, here's the thing. The day before, 24 hours before the operation uh, kicked off, before Bat Kid was going around San Francisco... The projector broke. Oh boy! Oof. Yeah, he the circuit board fried on it. Oh boy! And so the guy put uh, the guy wrote in to the company and he said, "Look, I'm I'm doing this thing right now for the Make a Wish Foundation. This kid really, really, really wants to be Batman." And da 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 da. He types out this whole thing, and the the guys the guys at the other end they they. Rush delivered this thing to him like the next several hours, and they're like, "Okay, take it, no charge." Dang. And so that was kind of one of the last-minute miracles that pulled this thing together. And watching everything, just how, just how this took off. You know, we got this kid going around in a black Lamborghini with the with the Batman logo on it. Uh, pretending to solve crimes, and and actually believing, for for a moment, believing that that he's actually he's doing this, that he's right here with Batman doing all this stuff. He's five years old. He's at that age where you're you're still, you know, you're still looking at Santa Claus and saying, oh yeah, it's a guy in a big red suit. Well, this is Santa Claus picking you up in the sleigh and dri- and driving around. So this kid has just got that kind of look on his face, like he's that amazed. And what I saw was all the people. Uh, th- this was uh, this was just supposed to be a, a standard elaborate event, but hashtag Bat Kid took off on every social media, Facebook, Twitter. Everything was just blowing up. They they started it with Make a Wish Foundation, and they couldn't believe it. I didn't realize. I I just thought this was something that was local. Oh no. Uh, a lot of people, yeah, tens of thousands of people locally stopped, and went, and and went on this uh, this journey with Bat Kid. They uh, people stopped their work days. They went out and they they joined on the streets and they were cheering them on. But all over the world, hashtag Bad Kid allowed people to follow Miles Scott's adventure as it was happening. Millions of people mm-hmm. were watching him. And I just thought, five minutes into this documentary, I was crying. Five minutes? I, 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 tear, I teared up. While while watching this, I wasn't like full on bawling or anything. I I teared up because uh, because when I look at when I look at all this all this stuff going on, here are all these people that are stopping uh, just to just to partake in this. It reminds me of something. What what is what is the what what is the the reason that we like Batman? Mm. Fighting crime? What is Batman 
believe about people. Justice. In the in the climax of uh, of the Dark Knight, we have we have an argument uh, between technically between Joker and Batman. Joker is trying to prove to everybody he's he's causing all this create chaos to prove to the world that all the people of Gotham are just as messed up inside as he is. Not to give away too much for the film. And Batman's argument in return is, no, at the, at the heart of it, the people of Gotham City really are good. They're not nearly as crazy as you think. And so while I'm watching, I'm watching uh, this movie, Bat Kid Begins, that's what I'm seeing is that people th this was kind of a magical day where people just sort just stopped and decided hey you know what let's all let's all do something good let let's all let's all cheer this kid on and it 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 really even though I was working on that day that it really felt like a holiday while while reading about this because everybody stopped Everybody who partook stopped and and uh, stopped what they were doing and took a took a look at this and they just said, you know, let's all let's all do something here special. It we get tied up we get tied up by so many things in our day to day lives, uh, politics, uh, religion to some extent. Uh, we we divide ourselves with our jobs, with our social status, uh, whatever. And it and it's good to take a break from all that, even just for one day, and say, "Oh, we all we all believe in this." And that's what I felt like while watching this. And it, it was a really good movie. Uh, <laughs> I guess, like, in a way, what, what you're pretty much saying is that this is one of the ultimate feel-good movies because we keep on hearing on the Internet time and time again that, like, people want to give up on humanity. They don't want to live on this planet anymore. They lost faith in humanity. This is the one film that they gained humanity. The time when there are so many people, like, the entire freaking world. I remember when, like, this was massive in the news that, like, people are following Bat Kid and that... Like, apparently there's this huge elaborate setup for this one kid that oh, they, like... Oh, it was like, amazing. You gotta see the movie, hundreds, but it's amazing. Hundreds, thousands of movie, uh, thousands of people all getting together for this one massive event to make this one kid happy to make him become Batman. Like, mm -hmm. it's one of those things that it shows that we can do good. Like, we, we certainly can. If the call, like... And this is just... This isn't for a big event, like... Normally, this kind of situation, like, people would just come in because, like, a huge celebrity is organizing an event or that, um, like, the cause is for something huge, like world peace or cure cancer or save the animals or stuff like that. But no, this is a thing that is just making a kid freaking happy and to make him Batman. Mm -hmm. Like, simple as that. And, you know, that, and that's all it takes. Because, like, they, they know they want to help out because, like, if they're going to make that kid happy, then they'll be happy as well knowing that they actually did good. This is a real thing that they did to help out to bring joy to someone else. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's kind of, like, the important thing to give out is the power, you know, the, the power of happiness to, like, to help out, to help each other out to make this one big thing happen. Oh yeah, I. This was this was a big deal, and I I hadn't realized just how. I I I hadn't realized. Just how far this had gone until I watched the documentary, on it. But um, I I did know one I did know a few things. You know there were, uh, uh, a lot of people eventually ended up chiming in. On this whole bad kid situation, um, I remember I remember President Obama stopped and 
uh, sent out a Vine video saying, congratulations, bad kid, you saved the day. That's cool. That's nice. That That's awesome. Mm -hmm. I remember the, uh, the cast of the CW's Arrow had the best had the best one they were on set and they were filming they, I, they must have filmed this with uh with with uh, uh some camera on, on set or something but they just sort of did this unscripted deal where they they're going around on set and they're like so uh got any crimes for me tonight um no bat kid saw bat kid uh solved them all Wow, thanks, bad kid. <laughs> so who wants... So does anyone uh, want to go out for dinner tonight? Yeah, we we finally have a night off, you know. Let's go get some Chinese. <laughs> I didn't realize... The one thing that I didn't realize, though, was... Um, somebody, somebody involved with the Batman films responded... Hans Zimmer. Oh. This the score maker. Mm -hmm. Uh recorded himself on his phone with a message for Bat Kid saying uh the, uh congratulations, thank you for saving the day. I've scored a personal musical piece for you. Oh wow. And, and he's sitting in front of his and he just, uh, he's sit, you see him in this documentary, he's sitting in front of a, his synthesizer and he just uh, bangs out this professionally sounding orchestral piece that sa it sounds right out of, uh, out of one of the Dark Knight films. And you're just kind of like, whoa, this is, this is amazing. These guys are going it it was it was a blast. Uh, it, if you feel yourself still butt hurt over Batman versus Superman, yeah, watch this movie. You'll you'll feel a lot better about yourself. <laughs> oh yeah. Absolutely. I mean, like, uh, do we have an update on, like, how's the kid now? Uh, I was just going to say that he, as of last year, he is cancer-free. Completely. So, yep, cancer-free. He uh, survived it, and he's actually problem-free now. He's not even, he's not in remission or anything, he's just... According to IMDb, I said it's, uh, he was cancer-free and living life to the fullest now. That's... You see that this is the power of Batman. Yes. He cures cancer. Yes. <laughs> Batman cures cancer. Um, His presence cures cancer. <laughs> um, yeah. Tell me, do you bleed? I can heal that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, uh. It was kind of funny because they turned San Francisco into Gotham City, and you just said, "It's just across the pond from me." And I just thought of the uh, a Batman v Superman joke where it's like, "You must live in Metropolis, then, James, because it's right across the pond from Gotham City." Um, you thought this was was just a blue shirt? Oh, here I go! Uh, I'm coming, Bat Kid. I was like, okay, if Gotham's in San Francisco and he's across the pond, James must be in Metropolis then. Ah, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, well. Damn it, James, you must be working with freaking, uh, who, who's that psychopath? Like, <laughs> Jesse Eisenberg, Lex, Lex Luthor. <laughs> Lex, Lex Jr. Lex Jr. <laughs> no way in hell. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Huh? So James, how was the process of the ne next from pages to pictures? Mm. <laughs> oh, I'm working on it. Thank you, BP. <laughs> I see. Now we got the book and the film that can work very well together. Uh, right. Um, are are you part of my writing team, by any chance? 
<laughs> Why, of course. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm also the writer of How Bad Can I Be? <laughs> I helped out with the Universal film, you know. I took a break at Warner Brothers, and now I spend some time at Universal, and I'll be helping them iron out with How the Grinch Stole Christmas. You guys should be thanking me. I'm the one responsible to bringing in Benedict Cumberbatch. That could work. That really could. Th that's not a joke, by the way. That no. that's legit what they're doing. Yeah, they are. Yeah, I know. Which is no. Which is good. I, I'm kind of excited to see that because Cumberbatch is amazing. Um, so from Bad Kid Begins, I'm gonna go straight into Batman Begins because it's a great transition. And uh, since I'm comparing origins, I was kind of curious. Almost I almost forgot. Like, Sorry, before we get up too off the topic. I don't know if this is still happening, but is there... Uh, I believe Julia Roberts was attached to uh, produce a feature based off of the story also in Star Knit. It was released... It was announced last year, January. Um, I'm just throwing that out there. Maybe it's still happening after this. I don't know. But we'll see. Go on. Um, so, with with my goal of this episode, I wanted to compare origins of Batman. Batman, Batman Year One was an origin story, obviously written by Frank Miller, did adapted to the film. Now, Christopher Nolan rebooted Batman uh, back in 2005 with Batman Begins. This is like the, the point where there was a grace period in between Batman and Robin and this film, and for the longest time, they they were considering to, to adapt uh, Batman Year One into live action, but uh, they were like, all right, nah, nah, we gotta do something original, and Nolan has fingerprints all over it, you know, he was kind of doing his thing, so, my god, this, this feels long, by the way, like, this is a two-hour and 30-minute film, like, <sighs> The, the origin, I, I only got up to an hour, and that's where it, I think the origin kind of stops at, because it starts off kind of uh, flashing back from past to present, or kind of like some, something like that, because they show Bat, uh, Bruce as a young kid at uh, Wayne Manor, you know, being a kid with Rachel. Mm -hmm. uh, Rachel, by the way, is a original character made just for the trilogy, or made for the films, not mentioned in the comics whatsoever, so no one's like, I want to put this character in just to make the conflict a little sweeter as love interest for Batman. That, that kind of just threw me off there. I was like, really? You gotta put a, somebody, somebody new in, in the films? Okay. Uh, so they're playing in the yard, and Bruce uh, falls down a well. And there's a bunch of bats in there. Oh boy, that's where you guys fear bats, because he fell in the well. Um... Then you see uh, Bruce. What's Wayne. that, Lassie? Little, little Bruce fell down the well. <laughs> <laughs> we, we must save him. <laughs> little Bruce, he fell down the well. I know what it's like to fall down the well. It has bats in it. That well was abandoned. Why didn't they take that down? That's just stupid of them. So they flash forward a bit. To Bruce Wayne being in like uh, in this like Asian country, like they don't specify where, like in somewhere in the Himalayas or something. And uh, the reason why he's doing this, like he's traveling the world to understand, you know, criminals, you know, and how to, you know, get in the minds of the criminals and how to, you know, do justice against them, kind of thing. So after his parents died, he just travels, like which is kind of mentioned in the Babadier one. He travels the world and comes back to Gotham. So this, Bruce is in this film is doing the same thing, but it's 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 extended. Like they show everything. They show him at this um, what is it like a prison more or less? Like because he's he's in prison for something. They don't explain what it is, but he's fighting these prison inmates, and then then he meets Liam Neeson at one point. Um. Or, yeah. Raz Al Ghul. Yeah, yes, thank you. And, uh, you know, he's like, uh, if you want a challenge, come up to the mountains, you know what the blue flower is, and we'll 
to will do something, and they do training. So it's basically training to be in the League of Shadows, which that keep it's like hmm become this become evil with us. Join the League of Shadows, and we'll teach you all the techniques that are how to be a ninja and teach you how to fight in the shadows. But he ends up uh, rejecting it at one at towards the end of it. It's like no, I don't want to be this. I want to be something else. And, like, they show training. They show Liam Neeson fighting with Batman, you know, uh, Bruce Wayne, just back and forth, back and forth. It just, it's so long. It's like, do I really want to see the training of Batman? I mean, I can understand the motivation behind it, you know, because his parents died. And they do at one point show the full-on flashback of his parents dying. Like, he's dreaming at one point. He's dreaming it. He has a dream of it. And they show him going to the opera, which is... Uh, Mask of Zorro, which is in every canon of Batman. Um, but then he's like in the opera, and they show bats. Like there's, it's like an opera about bats. Like why is there bats in the opera? And he, that's why he gets freaked out by. It's like oh, it's bats, it's bats. I gotta get out of here. <laughs> I, I, I can only imagine, like, just, like, some kind of Captain Hook reaction. Like, he goes into the opera, sees all the bats, Smee! Oh, sh and, like, treats Raz al Ghul like Smee. Oh, Smee! Oh, Raz, Raz! Raz! I mean, and, and they just show, you know, goes out to the alley and then meets up the mugger, bang, bang, shoots them dead. Don't be mm -hmm. afraid. Don't be afraid, Bruce. Don't be afraid. Oh, oh. It's just like... It, it, Sell all of our Enron stock. <sighs> <laughs> I was like... I Like I said, I'm sick of the whole Batman parents' origins, blah, 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 killing. It's, if they do something interesting with it, it's fine, but this is just repeating it over and over. I've seen it so many times. Um, and then Liam Neeson's Ra Raza, Raza Ghoul is um he's like uh it is not because he he thinks it was all his fault because of his parents died which i'm kind of thinking like it kind of is his fault like he asked his parents to leave like if it wasn't for him they, they wouldn't be dead but lane Leeson's like it was not your fault it was your father's fault and i was i i don't know at this point but then the he goes back to gotham after his training with uh, Ra's al Ghul, there's an incident where he, they try to put him in the League of Shadows and he's like, you execute this guy, and he's like, no, I don't want to, so he goes with this maneuver where he flips uh, a, a poker, goes into the inside, it flips up, it turns the building on fire, big explosions happen, Ra's al Ghul gets knocked out cold, you know, uh, Bruce actually saves him for some odd reason. Uh, sure, mm -hmm. saves him. Saves him. Why not? But he goes back to Gotham, and then he's, like, having his plan to come together to, you know, become this dark figure, you know, he's, Alfred knows all about it, you know, Elfin's trying to help him out, and later on, Lucius Fox, played by Morgan Freeman, knows, or not no knows, but he kind of, like, here's all the equipment, you know, here, and you see the sequence of him becoming Batman, you know, going through costumes, there was one point where they... You, sh you see Bruce in the, like a ski mask and kind of this low brow kind of suit, like becoming this, it's like jumping off walls. It's like, what are you fucking doing? It's, it's so weird. It's like it was before he got the cape and all the things. It's like, wow, that was a weird scene. But I guess with Christopher Nolan's Batman, I can understand why they they have to establish the origin because I don't think they ever did the full-on live-action origin of Batman in a film. Not in film Not, form, yeah. Yeah, it's like, it, I can understand that. It's just like, you have to do that. Like, 1989 Batman didn't have an origin. It was just straightforward. So I was just like, okay, I can understand it. It just it felt too long for me, which Batman Year, Batman Year 1 was kind of... Test, test, test. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Batman Year 1 was it's like... It's working, don't worry. Kind of bumped mm -hmm. it. Kind of bumped it. All right. Uh, Batman Year One is kind of straightforward. It was like boom, 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 boom. That's what I want. I want to like. I don't want to like, like over exaggerate origin of anybody. Like I want a simple like simple explanation of it. Like show me it briefly and then just like move on. Like don't stretch it out. But with Nolan's Batman, I can understand why. And mm -hmm. watch it. 
and it's been a while since I've seen it, so after watching it now, it's just like, okay, it's not bad. It's, it's like, because when he becomes Batman, there's a c couple of scenes where he does his Batman voice, and it wasn't that gravelly. It was like, hey, what are you doing? I'm Batman. Uh, it's kind of like that. It was like very low-key Batman, low voice. And I was like, okay, uh -huh. that, that wasn't so bad. It wasn't like extremely as bad as it was in the Dark Knight where he's all screaming in it. But, uh, Christian... Where is he? <laughs> Christian Bale, actually, uh, he, he kind of pulls off as Bruce Wayne. And then when he comes Batman, he does that voice and it kind of... It works. Like, he does somewhat a good job as Batman, but it's just... A lot of people are just... Say what they want about it. I I let that I let the voice slide. I mean, when you when you think about it, uh, if if he if he switches if he had the same voice when he was uh when he was just going around day to day as Bruce Wayne and then the same voice going around as Batman, you think people might actually pick up on it after a while. Gee, like George Clooney and Batman and Robin? Mm-hmm. It would be like if I become Batman and I don't change my voice. People will notice. Just no saying. Kidding. Yeah, exactly. Oh, but your fangirls will recognize your chin. <laughs> Do I have a significant ch chin? Really? Yeah. <laughs> this, this I am the knight! <laughs> I'm <laughs> um, I, I want to add in, I will say that as I was watching, like, God, the first hour of it, like, oh my God, I, like, I think the second half, the, the, the other half of the movie does, like, set up everything with Dr. Kane, Crane, Dr. Crane, and Scarecrow, that's, and Ra's al Ghul coming back, but the first hour does, like, set up everything to this point like it's good there's one scene that does take it straight from batman year one which was the kind of like the first uh real bust you know he does like a drug bust with them you know he, he appears out of nowhere and it's like this creature it's a creature it's not a person it's a creature it came out of nowhere with with these big wings you know and it was just like okay i give him props for that and plus they do have characters uh Detective Flass and then Commissioner Loeb from Batman Year One. So they added characters from Batman Year One into the, this universe that Nolan has built. So I guess they do pay homage to Batman Year One, but I just uh it's okay. It's 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 a good origin for Batman for when it comes to live action. The, it, the only it's one. a good it's a good lengthy origin. But uh Yeah, it's it's if you want to better understand, you want to see everything. I mean, you, you see everything. Like, it, I mean, people like to say, "Show us, not tell us," and that's what it is. They show you it, and not tell you what it is. Um, the the Christopher Nolan Batman universe. Um, I I've noticed it. Uh, looking back on it, especially with with all my experience with. Uh, Batman stuff since then, you know, doing doing my own form of research. I I realize that what he was doing there was taking uh, was was trying to make something that was a little bit more on the ends of gritty realism with this with this whole story. Mm -hmm. uh, you have every. Uh, for for pretty for pretty much uh, our times, uh, the uh, the uh, in the comics and in the cartoons, the the Batman story has been very very fantastic. It's it's uh, got a lot of it's got a lot of fantasy elements, and um, uh, with uh, with Nolan with Nolan's films. Uh, there's there's a lot of yeah right over the top moments, but there's you you're not really you're not really uh, thinking of it as as a fantasy. Example, um, Ra's al Ghul in the in the film he's uh, played very well by Liam Neeson, just doing Liam Neeson. 
Um, and he leads a he leads an organization called the the League of Shadows International Assassins Organi- Organization. Uh, they want to uh, they want to influence the world with their power. This is true. This is true to the comics. Or you can also look at the comics and find Raish Al Ghul. Same spelling, different pronunciation. Who's not just the leader of League of Shadows, but also 500 years old. Yeah. And uh, and uses a uses a pool called uh, the the uh, the La- the Lazarus pool uh, the Lazarus pit to resuscitate himself every time. He gets injured in battle. Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, um, so, noticeably absent from the Nolan verse. Uh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, th- th- what's actually really interesting, considering how, like, the Nolan Batman films are pretty much huge nowadays. It's it was really interesting to look back into when Batman Begins was released during that time. And I remember nobody really talked much about it. I don't remember, like, really making it big in the news and stuff. It was just more of an afterthought. Granted, this was back before, um, like, superhero movies were huge, and the only ones that really made an impact were just, like, X-Men and Spider-Man, and that's it. With that, like, with Batman... Uh, Like, I don't know. They didn't really pay that much attention. And considering it was only when when Warner Brothers tried to bring back DC again, um, like, it just doesn't seem as effective. Nobody really cared that much. It was only until uh, The Dark Knight when everybody started to pay attention to Batman again and when Christopher Nolan uh, really became such a high-profile director. Oh yeah, he. That was his. That was his peak right there. I mean, mm-hmm. Nolan had been working his way. He, he'd been working his way up the ladder with movies like Memento, which were, which were you know yeah, low really budget. Fast. Yeah, it's, low budget, but like, the right like it, it's definitely the place where you could really see, like his writing capabilities and when you know like he does have a future in filmmaking. Mm-hmm. Or even, uh, I I believe um, uh, insomnia. I believe we we discussed that previously on here. Yes, we have. I have. Yes. With uh, De Niro and Robert Williams. Uh, mm-hmm. Pacino and Williams. Uh, Pacino, rhymes, rhymes with De Niro, sort of. <laughs> but. Uh, but yeah, yeah. De Niro but... Pacino. <laughs> De Niro Pacino. Potato, potato, De Niro. Potato, potato, De Niro Pacino. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, yes. I've mentioned his work once before with Insomnia with Pharrell Williams. Yeah, so that was, that was one of his early careers, yeah. But, um... Uh, yeah, this... Um, taking on Batman Begins... I thought it was a good movie, but um, just, it it didn't really strike me as being great. I don't know some something about the mixture, something about the recipe that was uh, the Dark Knight just it, that just blew it out of the park. I mean, I remember going to see that in theaters three times. I have never gone to see a movie in the theater that many times. It, it's, I think usually, you know, sometimes when you set up a trilogy like this, you know, the first film does, is, you know, not the original, but, you know, it's it sets up everything, and that's what Batman Begins does. It sets up Batman, it sets up Bruce Wayne, it, uh... It prepares up, you for what's to come. Exactly. It, set, it shows up, uh... Actually, Jim Gordon too. He shows Gary Oldman as Jim Gordon. You know, totally forgot about him. I was like, oh wow, he actually does play a good Jim Gordon. Um, Although thinking about it now, 
is it really necessary to check it out? Because at this point, we're, no. we're living in an age where everybody knows a lot of the origin stories exactly. of, yes. uh, of like, Batman and Spider-Man and all that stuff. So, like, we could just skip, like, we can already just skip ahead to The Dark Knight and exactly. everybody will be fully satisfied. I remember, like, I saw The Dark Knight in theaters and I completely forgot about Batman Begins. Like, I completely forgot that it was even connected with Batman Begins. Uh -huh. So, we don't necessarily need it. it no. Like... It's pretty much like how in uh, like the upcoming Spider-Man: Homecoming, they're the, like they're not going to waste their time doing the um, they're not going to waste their time doing the origin story. They're just going to skip right ahead to the Spider-Man story. And thank God that like Sony did the smart decision to give Marvel like the entire creative yes. uh, decision on that. Yep. Yeah. And, and oh I, yeah. I, I was, I was going to say that you don't exactly I'm not recommending you watching Batman Begins like everybody knows the origin yeah. of It's Batman. there. It's it's there. It's it's like if you want to understand Nolan's uh origin of Batman, go ahead and watch it but just skip the, the Dark Knight. It's just like everybody loves yeah, the Dark Knight. It's just like oh, it's there. <laughs> it's like everybody loves the Dark Knight. It's good. It's really good. We're not going to talk about the Dark Knight uh but we're going to skip uh, beyond that, and talk about the Dark Knight Rises. However, mm. yes, cheers. And if I okay, if I may, Mike, can I do this entire bit as Bane? Oh okay, God, I was waiting can for I... it. I was waiting for it, man. <laughs> I I know what like, you think. I know you always expect that I would do like the weird voices and stuff, but I want to push this further and do this entire thing as Bane. So, <clears throat> ratings. Ladies and gentlemen, and tonight we shall be talking about The Dark Knight Rises. And honestly, it is quite fascinating, the result that led to this movie. Because this was after The Dark Knight, and it was one of the biggest superhero films at the time, before even the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Now, what's interesting with The Dark Knight Rises is that it was very hyped and very anticipated seeing the sequel to The Dark Knight. Since those three words were also in the title along with Rises. But the results were interestingly mixed. I remember the day when I was watching it and I couldn't even remember what even happened with all the other parts. You'd think this would be a major Batman movie, considering that villains like Catwoman, played by Anne Hathaway, would be featured. But not even she would be remembered in this movie. Nobody really talks much about Anne Hathaway's portrayal as Catwoman. People still either go as Earth with Eartha Kitt or Michelle Pfeiffer. But then... You also got Bane, who is actually, well, I guess he has mixed results as well. Of course, people making fun of, well, what I'm currently doing now. But personally, I feel like he's a fantastic villain. A great successor to Heath Ledger's Joker. Has this slight sophistication, but also has the brooding force but only uses it when necessary. But the story regarding Bruce Wayne and trying to go with his entire downfall, it just becomes ludicrous and it feels predictable. Like they've done this kind of story before that they tried to make Batman look like a villain, like if it was organized by James Jonah Jameson. But I would say that there are a few interesting things other than Bane as well. Like how when Gotham suddenly goes crazy after Bane makes one of his more impeccable speeches and suddenly we see this one scene where the guy who plays Scarecrow is now this judge who decides whether they want to live or die. And it's quite fascinating, but overall... It's a very mixed movie, I would say. Uh, there are a few good moments to remember, including Bane, but there are also some bad moments. The writing is not as strong as it used to be. Also, 
I think we can all agree the ending was stupid. The twist that they tried to reveal another villain was kind of dumb as well. And they make Bane look like a wimp. And also trying to make Batman die only to see Bruce Wayne later on in the table next to Alfred is just kind of dumb too. So, there are some good things, but there are some bad things. But overall, the Christopher Nolan trilogy ended off on a low note. Uh, you think you think it was too low of a note to, to handle? Eh. Yeah, it's just some things that they they didn't work out as well. It's just the writing feels all over the place. Mm-hmm. Well, I'd I'd have to agree. Um, there were some there were some things a bit about it that I I didn't quite understand. Like we have we have um, we have Christian Bale's uh, Bruce Wayne. Uh, in the beginning, living, uh, living as a, as a, a complete hermit from the public for the past, God knows how many years he. Eight. Yeah. We established that the Dark Knight Rises actually, uh, set in 2016. Mm. Oh wow. Well, we're still waiting. Oh, uh, we we already got one movie. Yeah, uh, but anyway, yes, um, yeah, with this one, um, I, d I didn't, how does he, how does he end up crippled, exactly? I mean, he's, in the beginning, he just sort of, he's going around on the cane, like, what, what happened here? Did just, did... Uh, uh, did you just not work out for a long time, and suddenly, uh, suddenly your your muscles went bad? That's never explained. I would I would like uh, an explanation for that. Um, uh, bringing uh, bringing Bane into the story. Uh, that's that was pretty hardcore. This is the this is the one. Where in every in every film in every Nolan film, uh, Gotham City is in danger. But this oh. is the uh, this is the only time Bane is the only villain uh, that actually that actually does that actually does something that destroys the city for a long period of time. Like he's the only one. He's the only villain that makes sense. The one that is doing something. Mm hmm. Yeah, there was a, uh, there was even a a point where. There was even a point where, if I recall correctly, he's uh, he's leading a gang against uh, uh, against the stock market, looting the stock market, and I was just like, what is this? Uh, some. Is this some commentary on Occupy Wall Street or something? <laughs> I don't know, but um, but in any case, yeah, a Bane is 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 the kind of he's the kind of villain that that manifests itself when uh, when you have uh, when you have people who who believe that they've that they've been wronged, and uh, that uh, that's the type of personality that can be taken advantage of by figures like that. And there's, it, it's funny how this is enjoyable as a film, for me at least, but there's just so much... Uh, uh, there's so many moments of uh, you just have to look at this and say, "Yeah, it's only a movie." You know, you have to, you do have to scratch your head at several points. Um, uh, uh, Bruce Wayne gets his back broken, and 
it only takes uh, what less than a month for him to heal. How long was that? Uh, no idea. They don't really establish that. It it just feels like a a relatively short period of time. Yeah, that's well. It's like I said. It's just the right. Like honestly, I feel like the writing is all over the place. That. It, I, it honestly broke my brain, and I just completely forget, like, what the heck happened in terms of, like, what happened with Bruce in, with Bruce Wayne's side of the story. All I can remember is just Bane. Is just Bane. That's it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember, I remember a sketch that I, that I saw on, online. They, uh, they have a scene... Uh, they, they have a scene in the film where, where they, um, they, uh, Bane has Batman locked up in a, uh, in a cell and he sets up a TV in his room and says, from here you can watch, you can watch your city get destroyed. Which is a clever I- idea for a scene, but someone took a, took that the next step and turned it into a sketch, and they they had these guys recreating the scene with Bane and everything, and some some cable guys come in and say, uh, "Yes, are you are you Bane? Yeah, uh, we're we're trying to set up this uh, this TV for you, but we need to go over a couple of terms for you." <laughs> So Bane's having an argument with the cable guys. Oh, I, I was actually thinking like there would be several TVs. It's like, on that television right there, you will see the destruction of Gotham. And on the TV next to it, you can watch My Little Pony. <laughs> no, this this was before Bronies was a thing. Uh, uh, it was 2011, wasn't it? 2012 was released. Oh no no no! That was no that was at at the prime man. That was prime. <laughs> oh okay well, never mind. Potato potato. But uh, but yeah the yeah that he's going through the terms and and he's just like, what do you mean I can't just get a standard? You guys won't let me out of your contract anytime soon. You guys are evil. <laughs> In fact, why is Bruce in this cage cell? You should be in there. For God's sakes. Yeah, that's uh, what. Well, that's what Bane would have done. Yeah, it was. Um, it have was... you seen my muscles? They are the size of two average men. I shall beat you to a fucking pulp if you don't fix the cable. Help to it, man. This ought to be a this ought to be a, a whole TV show right here. Just a a, a bunch of over the top comic book villains dealing with day to day life. <laughs> oh god. Oh, god. Fr- uh, we get, we get, we could pretty much call it the Fresh Clown Prince of Bel Air. Fresh. Oh. Fresh. West Philadelphia, born and raised, where the playground is where I spend most of my days. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, you're stalking little children better than that. Uh, Fresh Prince of Gotham, actually, that's, actually. There was a really old video. Somebody actually did that. They recreated the intro for Fresh Prince of Bel-Air with the Joker. Oh, nice. It was, it's, a, it's a classic. It was like, it's really good. Um, Third Night Rises is, is, the, is the absolute longest Batman film ever. It is long. It is fucking long. <laughs> Why do you keep mm-hmm. making these films, Nolan? And they're so long. Uh, but with this film, it does make up because it doesn't s- stretch anything out. Anyways, um, Bane is. Hi, Mrs. Of- Janik. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, you noticed. Okay, I yeah, should barge is something because I'm too loud. I'm trying to be more quiet. Keep it down, Mark. 
with mixtape. Are you making too much noise, mixtape? Ah, money's gonna come down. Um, okay, I lost my train of thought now, God damn it. Okay, Bane is an interesting choice as villain because you don't... Because the last time we seen Bane was in Batman and Robin. That was like a really bad portrayal of the character. Um, the interesting thing is Tom Hardy played Bane in this film. He, mm -hmm. he had a slow build-up in his career. Like, he's done some good stuff, but... Everybody knows him now as the new Mad Max, so he's climbed up the ladder a bit. And the thing is, in the comics, Bane was, I think, a Latino, a Mexican wrestler. So this is a, definitely a different interpretation of Bane um, entirely. Uh, he actually based the voice on a, I can't remember his name, but it's like based on a Romanian gypsy with some Latin with it. So it's like a... Romanian la Latin kind of portrayal instead of Latino, so. You know, interestingly, but interestingly enough, though, this is not the first time Bane was in a movie. Yeah, he just said Batman and Robin. Yeah, like, even though his role there was rather small, because he kind of, um, like, he was playing as uh, Poison Ivy's like big giant henchman in a way <laughs> and he doesn't have any roles mm -hmm. and basically in, in, under normal circumstances that's kind of the like that's what he would norm he would usually play considering like his size is just like the big threatening assistant to the villain mm -hmm. that like that always plays like kind of like the big bodyguard the semi boss to the final boss if you will right Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but he's, like, he's he's menacing, at least. He does a, a good job as Bane, you know, he... Oh, no, he's he's terrific as Bane. I think, like, ironically enough, with how The Dark Knight Rises is, um, you know, is kind of represented, like, I think this is the one that really kind of jump-started uh, Tom Brady's career, like, in, in order to go out in, in the roles that you Hardy. said. Hardy. Tom Hardy. Hardy. Did, who you did said, I say? Tom Brady. You said Brady. You said Tom a Brady. You said it. he's a footballer. <laughs> what? Everybody must have a pastime. I'm still American, so I love football. Well, he did flub that football stadium, so maybe he had a past in football. It's like, fuck this stadium. I'm blowing it up. <laughs> there was another thing that I... They took my... Oh, fudge. I was about to say Stanley Cup. <laughs> they took my Super Bowl. I shall take their stadium. <laughs> I was going to say your Canadianism. I know. I'm too... <laughs> fudge, now that I'm being too Canadian. <laughs> Go on, James. That, that reminds me of something... Um... I remember watching the the trailer for The Dark Knight Rises and noticing right off the bat an Easter an Easter egg and it was it was uh, something it was something uh, rather quite uh, rather quite interesting they ha they show the destruction of the of the football stadium in the in there and one of the, in one of the shots they have they they have the football players running away and once the destruction stops one of them turns around to look at the hole in the stadium and the back of his jersey says ward on it oh and i looked at that and i was just like okay ward like bert ward the guy that played robin in the in the 60s batman yeah. Is yeah. this a clue? Is this an Easter egg? Is this a little hint here? Yeah. Well, there was that um uh that 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 big thing with jo Joseph Gordon Lovett playing John Blake who is supposedly so supposed to be like Robin in this universe, like it's, it's leading up to the point of being Robin or something. So, if, if they had gone any further, yeah, they could He would have yeah. been Yeah. 
that's that's what the, everyone was talking about. At least that's from my here. It's like, oh, you know, you know, they went down further. It would have been Robin in there. It was like would have been. So that could have been like a nice Easter egg to the past too. It's like it was cool, at least. And I like, I I liked him as a Robin character. I thought. I I like I liked him. I like Joe. I like Joseph Gordon Levitt generally. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah no. Yeah, I, I feel like they really underplayed the whole Robin thing. Like he, like in here, he was just a police officer. Yeah. It was only until the end there was this one moment. It was like, hey, you know what would be a great name for you, Robin? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I and I don't know why I made this woman to be a subtle Gilbert Gottfried. <laughs> Um, yeah, it was, like I said, Bruce, like, Christopher, Christopher, uh, Christian Bale is, um, this is, he did a full trilogy as Bruce Wayne and slash Batman, no other Batman has done that, and, uh, he, like I said, he, his, Bruce Wayne and his, ba and his Batmans are, he, it's, he's good, he's a good Bruce Wayne, his Batman is still pretty on point to me, he's, I mean, he's he's not Michael Keane for sure, but it's just he's like suck like a banana to me, I guess. Mhm. Mm there's there's a robot chicken like sketch where uh, there's Batman, and all of a sudden Bane comes by and breaks his back, and then it keeps doing the same thing, and like Batman's doing something else. And I was like, I'm fully healed again, and all of a sudden Bane comes by. Oh, not again! <laughs> I think I remember that. That was. I think I remember. And, it come, and Batman's like, okay, I'm fully healed once again. Oh my god. And also, Bane walks by. Oh no, 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 not this again. God, god damn it! <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's just so funny. So, I mean, with The Dark Knight Rises, Bane actually rose as, as a great potential for Batman. Like, the reason why. Uh, Nolan chose Bane was because he wanted to test Batman mentally and physically. So it's a, he was a great test beyond the Joker, I guess. Uh, the so. bat, uh, the comic book Bane, did actually uh, break Batman's back though. That yeah. was yeah. Um, that was one of the big deals. Yeah, that's why kind of the robot chicken sketch kind of does does two things. They're doing the comic and movie at the same time. But interesting noting, I just read this off IMDb, but uh, no one considered doing a mixture of CGI and deleted scenes to have the Joker appear in the film. But they mm -hmm. thought it was disrespectful to Heath Ledger. Yeah, which... it would be it would be like too soon, you know. Yeah, so the, thank God they just left that out completely. But, like, what would they do if they have a CGI Joker? Like, is it just a cameo, or like... Yeah, I don't know. They didn't specify, but just like, oh, okay. Um, if it's not important to the plot, don't do it. But it's... the dark, See, with the Dark Knight Rises, it's kind of... It's... I keep hitting the mic, it's weird. Pa pa um, Mike, stop hitting the mic. <laughs> For me, it's the Dark Knight, and then the Dark Knight rises, and the Batman begins. So that's how I would place it, according to likability in the trilogy. Mhm. Mm and it's weird how it's set in the future, and it's set in 2016. So Batman, uh, I mean, The Dark Knight Rises is actually happening this year. This year? Yes. Technically? Technically, yes, according to the movie. Oh, wow. Because it's been, it's been eight years since The Dark Knight, Dark Knight and it's just... So... Oh, uh, we, we're in the future. Ooh. Future! It's not all that great. Um, eh, it's alright, I guess. There's a shortage of chairs. Oh. Yeah. Take it easy, Peter. That's a good impression. 
Oh, thanks. How was my Bane, by the way? Pretty good. Oh, thanks. All right, I tried. Um. Yeah, Matt just summarized it really good because Anne Hathaway's Catwoman just that didn't. It's funny as I was reading another fact here that uh, when auditioning for the part, Anne Hathaway thought it was Joker's girlfriend Harley Quinn. Oh really? Yeah, until Nolan's like, no, it's for Catwoman. Oh. So she thought she would be the audition to play Harley Quinn in the movie, which, thinking about it now, I was like, what if... What? I don't know. What if she, uh... What if she waited to... Uh, to audition for Suicide Squad? <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's kind of a little late. Well, we don't know... I don't know. Well, we don't know what's gonna happen with that, so... <laughs> I mean... Yeah, that's that's certainly coming. Um, to wrap this up, finally, we'll talk about a upcoming DC animated Batman movie, which is coming out in July of this year, right around Comic Con, uh, called The Killing Joke. And James is gonna actually talk about that a bit, and because he read the comic for it. Uh, okay. Yes, I didn't just read any comic. This is the deluxe edition. Ooh. Ooh. What's more about this? Uh, what's important about this? Well, what's going um, on? Hmm? Like, what makes it deluxe? Well, uh, it has one extra comic near the end uh, added on, but more importantly, um, everything, everything that you have in this has been remastered and recolored to uh, to more accurately reflect what the what the comic was supposed to look like uh, back in the um, back in the uh, the eighties when this was released. I believe it was eighty eight. Yep. Um. They uh, they didn't like the color scheme. They uh, the comics uh, the comic folks they decided to uh, go ahead and make it a little bit lighter, and and so they they gave it a, a color job. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up a a, a few uh, a few panels here just to give you an idea of what the color scheme looks like. This is it. You got, you got mostly everything's happening at nighttime. You got blues, purples, red, yeah, yeah. Uh, some red, g definitely a lot of green right there, of yeah, course. Yeah, like the, the colors pop out. Mm-hmm. And the uh, the color scheme for the for the printed comic, they gave them all really not not this sort of gritty looking sickly colors they gave them they give them uh really bright radiant colors it was it was orange washed a lot of the a lot of what you see is just sort of color colored up in oranges and reds and it, it kind of looks like a it kind of looks like a peach you know oh, really so it's all yes. bright colors and <laughs> it's mm -hmm. all colors and sunshine and rainbows with all the terrible things that the Joker does to Batgirl. Yes, and Commissioner Gordon. Oh, no, that's uh, the, uh, the the reason why I picked this in particular is because the comic uh, I had never read before and it's it, it's become it's become such a defining story uh, in yeah. the Batman universe. Yeah. The idea is in the beginning uh, in the beginning of the comic, and it, this was written this was written as just to be a, a one-off comic piece mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, featuring Batman characters. 
and they uh, uh, the the comic starts out. Batman goes to visit uh, to visit the Joker in Arkham Asylum. Finds out uh, that the Joker's escaped, and uh, elsewhere we see the Joker uh, buying up. Uh, buying up a, an, an amusement park and later what happens is eventually uh, he breaks into Commissioner Gordon's house shoots Barbara Gordon in the spine and uh, kidnaps Commissioner Gordon takes him to the amusement park and does everything that he can to drive him insane. And, oh my goodness. Uh, the, uh, this, this story is, is pretty disturbed on many grounds. For starters, uh, when writing this, they decided to, they decided to give, um, the Joker a backstory. This had never been done before. Mm-hmm. True. Uh, not even, not even when it came to the films, because well, hey, the films hadn't come out yet. But uh, the backstory goes like this: uh, he he was struggling to be a comedian, a stand-up comedian. He failed, and uh, uh, he has. Uh, he has a wife with uh, a baby on the way, so he decides in desperation he's going to go ahead and uh, try to pull off a job for a local gang and be a be a character uh, be a character known as the Red Hood in the Batman comics. And uh, they're they're going off to some sort of heist that's in a in a chemical plant uh, one night, but he just hours before hours before uh, the heist is supposed to be pulled off, we he gets the the memo that his wife, an unborn child, died in a car crash. Mm. But now he can't. But now he no now with no longer any reason to. Uh, uh, to pull off the heist for even for money reasons, he tries to back out of it. But the gang says, "No, uh, you're you're in this all the way. It's too late." So they go and try to pull off the heist. It's a disaster. The shoot the cops shoot up everybody. And Joker, before being the Joker, while trying to escape, falls into a vat of chemicals. Does that sound familiar? Oh, of course. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Comes out the other end, skin bleached, hair crazy, and and everything completely toxic. Now, interestingly enough, I read the I read the uh, the afterward by the um by the author. And he says he has this to say. Uh, this is uh, this is Brian Boland. Uh, he says the script for the Killing Joke was very good, but I must admit I had to grit my teeth a couple of times during the drawing of it. Oh well, it's, uh, I scratch that. This is the author, not the not the uh, this is the this is the artist, not the actual author. Ah. Uh. Uh, I, for instance, would never have chosen to reveal a Joker origin. I think of it as just uh, one of a number of possible origin stories manifesting itself in the Joker's fevered brain. Oh. So... That makes sense. Think about that for a second. Um, This... uh, uh, the way that this is per- 
the way that the comic tells the story is very backwards and and forced. You know, it's kind of like um, it, it's kind of like uh, uh, it's kind of like Memento in a sense. It go it goes back in time. It goes forward in time. Uh, telling the story, and with the uh, and with the um, this story, uh, the, what what they did was um, eventually a lot of the elements. Uh, this was a popular enough story that eventually the elements were made canon in the comics. Um, so we have uh, so we have um, the Joker at one point trying to. Uh, in the comics, there there was a one uh, a single page panel, uh, not even included in one of the stories, uh, where they they have the Joker trying to set, tell his secret past, and he holds out three cards. One has a chemical plant. One has a one has a a wife. One has a uh, one uh, one has a a comedian a clown on there and he says i you know i try to figure out my backstory from this because honestly i i don't have a clue just these vague memories and uh, so the idea goes if joker can't remember why should we so that's why Every every Joker that has popped up since then owes some sort of debt to this uh, to this story. In the bat in the nineteen eighty nine Batman movie, we have the chemical plant piece of the origin. Uh, obviously, uh, in in the Dark Knight in the Dark Knight. Um, we have Heath Ledger's Joker, who likes who likes uh, to tell different backstories every time uh, about how he got, how he got these scars. Mm. And uh, in one of the stories, he says he mentions that he has a wife at one point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's like why don't yeah like the why don't like the, why don't you smile like she. I think like the wa- the wife told him like to smile more. Mhm. That was one of those stories. And we never found out what happened to her now, did we? Yeah. Nope. But uh and then the the failure as a as a comedian part, that's um that's actually in in so many different Joker stories. I I believe that was the I believe that was Ken with the the animated series. But also, uh, also last year I was binge playing Arkham Origins uh, until the early hours of the morning, and they do briefly tap into the the Joker's backstory there. So there's one scene where you actually have to assume the role of the Joker playing his way through his own memories. He fails as a comedian. People are throwing are throwing stuff at him on stage. So you, as the Joker, in his own memories, have to fight back against the critics, physically. Oh. I see, I see. Yes. So, the reason I bring this comic up now is, as Mike said, it's being turned into a movie. And... It's the first Batman movie, period, to be given the R rating treatment. And you know what's, and I just want to mention right now, it's actually very interesting to note that beforehand, usually these directed DVD Batman movies are often very low brow. Well, not, I, okay, no, that's not what I meant. Wrong wording. I meant like they were, they're really under the radar. Like nobody really gives, nobody really cares much about these. Uh, directed video Batman sequel Batman sequels. It's like 
Uh, like they're, they're nothing really compared to like the live action movies that are released in theaters. So nobody really gives much attention to them. But somehow the Killing Joke is making huge. It's making huge news. Like people are talking about it. It's like, you know, it, it's honestly getting. Well, no, I wouldn't say it's getting more attention than um, the dark than Batman versus Superman: Dawn of Justice, but. Like, it's immediately after the movie is released. Everybody just moved on to this one, and they're giving their full attention to that. Like, with all the announcements from having uh, Kevin uh, Kevin Conroy return, uh, Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill returning to their respective wards, uh, the respective roles. Um, also, that, like, they're, they're making it a rated R movie, that they're literally, um, that they're going to go all out on it. The fact that they are also adapt, like they're pretty much adapting what's possibly known as the most infamous and possibly most controversial Batman comic that ever lived. That they're going to be really accurate with it, with the with the rated R rating, knowing that like they ain't backing out on anything, and it's going to be crazy. Like that, like people are anticipating hard on this, so this could be big. Oh yeah. Yeah, this I, I I have a lot of high hopes for this. Um, I, I actually knowing that knowing that there's an R rating attached, I expected it to be a little bit more than it was. And I'm gonna I'm just gonna show you a couple of panels right here. This is the this is the uh, the touchy uh, the raunchy material that we're gonna be expecting. Here we have in these frames. Uh, Commissioner Gordon kidnapped, brought to the amusement park, stripped naked. Uh, but uh, thankfully, uh, thankfully, sort of covered. Now, and I have seen the image, original panels of this, so imagine, so imagine this, uh, sort of flooded with bright orange and reds. Oh God! To make it look friendly. Don't you just love that idea? <laughs> a, na a naked, tortured Commissioner Gordon in shiny, bright orange. Yes, all of the all of these baby dolls were just so friendly looking with the way that they popped, you know. <laughs> just the way the Joker wants to make a child friendly and to enjoy the experience of all the fun little things that I'm going to do to Commissioner Gordon, of course. And so, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll spare you Commissioner Gordon's ass here, but um, he, uh, he sticks him in an amusement park ride, and... And uh, as as he's as he's going through this little roller coaster, they decide on the next stage to page to print pictures of what the Joker did uh, to Barbara Gordon. Oh AKA, God! Yes, I know. AKA that girl. And here's what we've got. He's looking at this while it's flashed all around. Oh, dear. All around him on, on projector. Uh, the idea here is he wants to make Commissioner Gordon crack because he just said, uh, he's saying, all you have to do to be crazy like me is have one bad day. Which, again, I believe, which, again, I believe turned into uh, the Dark Knight Joker. In a in a sense, mm. but um, I I had expectations here, and and this is pretty th this is pretty disturbing, even by even by uh, Batman comic standards. But I don't well, like know. Like I so said, huh? sorry, it's like I said, it's it's like I said, it's the mo it's the most controversial Batman comic there is, I think. Is it? Yeah. Would it be the most controversial? It would be. I don't know. And... Also, Batman and Robin would be up there, of course. 
Yeah, well, I'm never gonna let go of All Star Batman and Robin. Yeah, well, that's infamous for other reasons, but right. this one, this one is appreciated, right. and I'm looking at this. It's disturbing, but having seen, uh, having seen the other animated Batman films, this is kind of tame now. Like this, it, if you just presented it like it is here, I'd I wouldn't be surprised if they got away with the the PG thirteen rating. This is going to be rated R. You never know how far they're going to. So what? How far they're going to do with it? Yeah, what what are they going to do here? Uh, is the, I'm I'm only guessing that there must be some sort of material added. That from uh, what I from what I saw is that they're only going to go with um, they they say well from the rating board that they put up it said that the, it, they're just going to show disturbing imagery and that's pretty much it and hold on like I can go there because uh, one thing that I would mention about like how big the Killing Joke is is that it's featured on the main page on IMDb like one mm-hmm. of the pan- like I'm seeing this right now. Like, you got the trailer for Snowden, you got the trailer for Me Before You, and the first one that they're prominently showing is the official trailer of Batman the Killing Joke. Mm -hmm. That's how big of a deal this is, and it's going direct to video. Yeah, so yeah, it says, um, yeah, it's rated R for some bloody images and disturbing content. Yep. See, Mm -hmm. and from what I understand is that the comic, oddly enough, was shortened too short for the to make into a feature length so they added some more stuff in which includes some, some more stuff about Barbara Gordon and Batgirl yeah you can and, tell that from watching the trailer and um, looking into the animation itself I think we're what we're going to get what we're pretty much going to get here is pretty much very similar to what I previously stated with uh, Batman year one is that it's um, it's going to be a bit better than TV animation, but not as good as feature animation. Uh, but the arts, but I will say though that it it does get a step higher than year one, mm-hmm. considering that the art style is going to stay very true to what we got in the in the Killing Joke comics. Yes, that. Yes. 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 Yeah, this a, image is. Is, quite is this popular. like when we fully see the Joker, like how he fully becomes him? Yeah, this is this is him, you know, going into the chemical plant. What comes out, takes off the red hood, and ha ha ha. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. That's that's the image that they have posted all over, all over the the promo material for the new movie. Yeah, so I, that's what I kind of noticed about this. The animation's going with the style of the comic, more likely trying to emulate the style and look of it, which is as best as they can. I mean, they can't yeah. get that shading down. Like, oh no, no, no! I know of some people out that I've heard they're just saying like it's kind of like looks unfinished at most po- points. It looks like it's like slowish. It's not that smooth. And I was like thinking, it's only a promo. You know, they could fix it up in post. You know, kind of. Yeah, I don't know. It's just minor. It's only details. coming. It's coming out. In it's July. only coming out in July, so. Yeah, in July. Yeah. So. And they, and and they, I don't know how the how how much time they, they put into the usual production of these, but, I'm feeling like the the turnaround time for this from when it was announced to, uh, to when it's going to be released, is actually pretty short. Yeah, it, it seems like I would guess around a year, probably. Mm-hmm. Like give give or take a year from the beginning of production with the writing, all the way up to um, like the release of the movie, which like considering the like I said the animation is in like complete feature length quality, there will be some still limited animation into it. So we'll wait and see how that goes with it. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'm... we hmm? finish your thought. Yeah the the fact that they got uh, Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill back, as you said, some people are looking at this as being not just an adaptation of the comic, 
they're looking at this new movie as being what if this is a a closure what if this is a, a closure piece to uh uh to uh Batman the animated series oh like this is the the ending that we've all been waiting for for that considering that well actually on top of having Kevin Conroy and uh, and Mark Hamill into it, they, they do have more of the cast in there. They also, from what, what I found, they also got Tara Strong to be Barbara Gordon, and they also got Ray Weiss to play uh, Commissioner Gordon. Wait, was Ray Weiss in the animated Batman series? Wait a minute, let me just check on that. I'm pretty sure he was. Uh, oops, wait a minute. I don't think I don't think he's listening there. Uh oh. No, I don't think so. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. Let me just uh oh boy. I don't think I got it. <laughs> I don't think they got it all, but no, it's uh sad. Alfred No oh no 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 no. Okay, no, he's uh no, because beforehand it was Bob uh Hasting. Mm. Yeah, it was Bob Hastings before. Okay, so all, all right, Ray Weiss is pretty much picking things up from uh, from him. Okay, okay. And we the cast only consists of uh, four, uh, only four people. We only got Batman. We only got Commissioner Gordon. We got the Joker, and we got Batgirl. Like we only got four people here. Like, That's... is there more? Isn't there more in the comics or? Oh, there's more. They're, that's all they that's all they have listed so far yeah, of course when the of course when the movie gets released they're gonna have somebody some fan come on and post the whole cast right um but yeah Tara strong is is one of the few voice actors to be i think uh double billed as as crucial characters she's also harley quinn right mm-hmm so, I, as you guys were talking about this, I did dig up a couple of DVDs I have in my collection. I do have the Dark Knight Rises on DVD, just so you know that I love the film. But, regarding The Killing Joke, this is interesting because in the early 2000s, there was a short-lived TV series called Birds of Prey. Mm-hmm. So, what happened in the pilot episode, I think they established uh which is a reference to the killing joke of the joker shooting batgirl barbara gordon and now she's disabled she doesn't she can't be batgirl anymore so she becomes oracle and that's how the show kind of starts off just be her being that way so yes even a short-lived tv series references the killing joke with the origin of you know of a different character well that's also how it was in the comic and mm-hmm. and yeah, later yeah. into the game. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I was just like, because it, it, honestly, funny enough, uh, <laughs> if you if you watch the scene in particular, if you ever find a clip, they sh- they don't show the Joker. They show like from the eyes, from the nose down. So you see like there's a guy in white makeup looking like a Joker and shooting Barbara Gordon, but the voice is actually Mark Hamill. They brought in Mark Hamill to do the voice of the Joker for that particular scene. Oh wow! So it's uh, it's interesting. So once you mentioned the Killing Joke and knowing Barbara Gordon gets shot, I was like, "Birds of Prey." Mm. Interesting look back. So I just thought of that. So, so if you, uh, it's it's I'm kind of excited to see it actually, based upon what I've seen in the trailer and. Hell, I might even read the Yeah, comic. it looks crazy. Like, honestly, I wouldn't mind, like, picking up the comic just to see the movie. It looks fascinating. Oh, it is. I mean, I, I mean, it feels like, it, it feels like one of those must-reads for, uh, a mo- for, like, comics in general. Like, even if you're not interested in comics, like, if you know the characters, like, you gotta yeah. pick that up. Yeah, it's a, it's a quintessential Batman comic. You know, they always say, it's the killing joke, it's the Dark Knight Returns. Nobody mentions Batman Year One, goddammit. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's it's up there with everything else. There's other storylines that 
Batman's in. There's I've there's like like Batman, The Long Halloween, Hush. There's plenty of comics to pick up to read when it comes to Batman. Mm-hmm. Uh, and his legacy keeps on going on. It's it's been seventy plus years for the character ever since being created in nineteen thirty nine by Detective Comics. So. Yeah, and soon, like we're we're definitely getting a lot more. As of this video, um, like the Dark uh, Batman vs Superman: Dawn of Justice was currently released, so uh, soon we will see Ben Affleck ba Batman coming back in Suicide Squad. Then afterwards, we will see uh, what seems what seems like it's going to be a parody of the Batman movies with uh, the Lego Batman movie. Then afterwards, Ben Affleck will be doing his own solo Batman movie, so we'll see how things go with that. Yes, and he's pretty much the auteur on that one. Yeah, pretty much. Like he's now, like he's pretty much uh, taking the like Pat, like Christopher Nolan has passed the baton to uh, Ben Affleck now. So, well, and what does the world fact, come to? <laughs> well. Uh, like to his credit, it seems like critics love critics and audiences loved his portrayal as uh, Bruce Wayne and Batman in this. Like he seems to have nailed it. So we'll see yeah. how things go in um, in his own movies, and we'll see if uh, if Suicide Squad is even worth it to begin with. Because so far, DC movies in general are not really worth are not really worth it. So if Suicide Squad isn't really a hit with audiences, then like not just DC, but Warner Brothers is gonna be in trouble. Yeah, it's um. Yeah, yeah. We he can play the character, but can he direct the character? Is the thing, and oh, the on um, yeah. And on top of that, uh, Suicide Squad. I'm still hopeful. Yeah, I am too. Actually, it looks like yeah. Uh, I was wondering because I'm not 100 percent sure of what people think about it. Like, I heard some people might say it's good, some people say it's not. I, I don't know. It's it's mixed, but I I mean I've I've seen people in the camp be like, I'm so excited to see this. It's it's like my most anticipated of the year. People are saying so. Uh, it could work. I mean, you see glimpses of Batman in the 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 recent trailer. Actually, if you look at it, it's like okay, you see a bit more of Batman. You get to see. Um, him saving uh, Harley Quinn, Bef you know they, they're they're gonna try to do like an origin of Harley Quinn, and then the Joker kind of pops in and influence her, and Batman's gonna appear in a couple of scenes here and there. Um, it's interesting that Ben Affleck uh, is portraying Batman. He's an older Batman, so they're doing like a the Dark Knight Returns kind of Batman, whereas he's older, so they're not gonna do anything like. A reboot of it or anything so it's just gonna be like a different take on batman which mm -hmm. is interesting yeah well don't screw it up uh well ben affleck has all the control in the world now with that he could do i whatever. guess so so let's let's hope for the legacy to go on and just continue because Batman's a really darn awesome superhero, by, by far. Just keep it I mean, on. he's... Like, pretty much, he is the most iconic... Well, he's one of, if not the most iconic superhero that we, there is out there. Like, there are, there are people that are so dedicated to him, and he's pretty much, the, like, next to Superman, he is the biggest name in DC Comics. Um, pro and hands down, he could possibly be the most popular superhero that's not a part of Marvel. So, of course, like, we want to see more adventures with Batman. And, of course, like, who else could be the perfect match to portray the villains? So we'll just have to wait and see how things go in the future with Batman. And hopefully his legacy will forever live on. Yep, and we're going from one legacy to another legacy for Cinema Royale. Next time, we're going to check out the franchise known as The Wizard of Oz. You know, the adaptations of Wizard of Oz. You know, it's based on a book, and you got the iconic musical. Plus, there's other adaptations of Wizard of Oz. So, we're going to talk about all about that next time. Everybody's going to come back, especially Devin, so it'll be fun to talk about that. I know James will probably talk uh, about... I know Devin's going to talk about the books. James will probably dig his nose into the books, maybe. Who knows? Um, 
That's been Cinema Royale. Thanks for listening and watching. Please subscribe for more Cinema Royale and other goodies coming soon on this channel. Uh, thank you for 500 subscribers, by the way. Thank you for that. Um, please give me some more subscribers. I'm not that greedy, but I just... We are a, f we are a family here. What more? What more? <laughs> Need more! I want more now! What want more now? Um... Uh, like, like this video if you liked it. Comment below. What is your favorite Batman? Who is your favorite Batman? Is it Michael Keaton, Kevin Conroy, Val Kilmer, George Clooney? Did you like Michael Ben Affleck? <sighs> uh, so, that is it. Long live cinema. Good night. Ciao for now. I am the night. <laughs>